Hey there YouTube, this is Michael Kenny of California Wilderness. I just thought I'd shoot a raw footage video of my newly put together pocket fishing kit made out of PVC. And now you're probably getting a little high reflection from the light on it, sorry. Um, I finally got off my rear and got some PVC. Um, for Christmas, my uncle gave me a lot of his old fishing equipment. Uh, some leaded line and lighter line that I usually carry my really heavy stuff. I'm um, in plenty of lures and things like that that I have in here. The only thing I don't have in here that I might carry, but I'm probably just going to carry it in a small box with a foam pad, is some flies. But I want to carry those separate because there's some really nice ones in there that I know just get tore up in here. And I'd rather just keep them in the box for storage. But um, let's go through this, shall we? First things first, let's go over the exterior. I have at least 10 feet, only 10, of um, red duct tape got from the local hardware store. Next I have my three main different types of line. I have, and I also have written down the poundage on the end in case I forget. I have a 25 pound test fishing line that I'd probably use more for bank line. I have a 18 pound test leaded line and a six pound test fishing line. So, and with the different weights and the different styles, uh, this is a lot thinner, a lot lighter. I could use this for flies or something. With the really heavy, strong kind, you can use that for bank line. Um, the leaded line, I could use it for a mix of regular fishing and bank line, perhaps. Uh, probably not so much bank line. Probably use a stronger kind just in case I catch something bigger than what I thought so I don't lose it. And I only have on the six pound test fishing line, that's the only one I have the swivel attached to. For these I did not, just in case I was going to use them for types of traps or whatnot in demonstration or videos later, so I did not attach a swivel. But I do have small sections of duct tape holding them wrapped up. Um, another thing you'll notice is I do not have a paracord wrap for my wrist yet for when I'm casting this. Um, haven't gotten around to getting it done. And I do realize, I want to mention this real quick, because I'm using two caps and not a plug, that casting will be a little dip more difficult. And I was going to work with a file to get that fixed up. Um, it'll be a little bit more difficult to cast out my line because I use two caps and not a plug. So, because it'll rub up against here. So, you got to be careful of that. Okay, let's pop this open and go through our contents. Okay, I'm just going to dump out the lures and go over them with you. Okay, first few ones. I have a... Hang on a second. I have just a regular raw spinner and I took the main piece of hardware off. It was a, actually not very good lure. And I took that off the spinner. And what it is, is pretty much an offset spinner. And I can attach whatever hardware I want to hear. I can attach a regular lure, um, a gummy, an actual um, night collar, whatever I choose, I can attach to this. The spinner will attract the fish's attention, and then they'll be attracted to whatever I have hooked on the side. Very nice. So multi use lure. I have a small gummy cricket, a couple of regular store-bought gummies, one's yellow, one's like a violet, a weighted hook, very useful. Um, I forget what the name of this lure is, but it was a lure that's pretty successful. What it does is um, this makes also a spinning um, movement and also a bit of a vibration noise that um, helps to attract fish. So I think it's called, um, it's not a rooster tail, but I'll try to get the name for you guys, and I'll put it in the description once I find out. And then I got a spoon with a treble hook. That's another thing I'd like to mention real quick, because on a lot of my lures, I have treble hooks on just about all of them. But treble hooks are highly useful to carry in your kit. Next, I have a raw gummy, no hook in it yet. Um, I have two different bobbers. Let me... 
I have a small and a medium bobber. Those. Next, I have my ever trusty super glue container filled with plenty of snap joints and weights and small, really small hooks. Um, some medium sized hooks. I don't have any large ones in here yet. I was going to put a large treble hook and maybe a couple of large regular hooks in here. Not too big though. But the good thing that's about these small hooks is you can catch a lot more with a small hook and eat well than you can fighting and being difficult with a reg uh, regular hook or a larger hook. Like this weighted hook is probably the largest hook I got in my kit right now. And it is not as big as some people like to carry. But I got some eagle claws and other regular small hooks. So plenty of hardware here to keep me going for a good long time. I have it all safely secure in this Subaru container. And normally when I get into this I don't have to dump it all out like I just did. Get a bit out at a time. So because there's plenty of the same things because you never just want to bring one of a certain item you want to bring multiples just in case that's why I carry everything that's why I carry two bobbers two of the same lures I carry two spinners things like that because two is one and one is none because you're guaranteed to lose some so now it all packs away nice and neat relatively simple the only thing I'd be careful is That'll be easy when you're working like with some of these because look, this one is plenty small. I could easily lose those. It's the only bad thing about carrying such small hardware. So you gotta be careful not to lose it. was packed away a bit better last time but since I dumped it out kind of messed it up give me a moment spare with me here it's back in there okay now that's all packed away just put the cap right back on and there you go slide that right into the bottom of the kit Slide on my bobbers and then slide in my hooks. Okay, now the one thing I want to mention before I finish packing this up is you always put what you're most likely going to uh, use first. You want to put that in your kit last so it's ready to go as soon as you need it. You don't want to pack it real deep in ways where you have to really dig for it and look for it before you get to it. That's one thing you want to know about these kind of things. In fact, what I'm noticing is this cricket and the spinner would probably be a really good combination. Attract the fish's attention and then get them. So I'm going to put that on here. In my next video, I'll test this little idea out. So, But, soon enough, as soon as I get my fishing license renewed, I will do a video demonstrating my pocket fishing kit. I'll probably add a couple rubber bands on the side for demonstration. I'll show you how you can cast your pocket fishing kit by itself. I can easily attach it to a nice stick. Use for a rod and fly fish with it. You can do whatever with it. Whatever you please with a pocket fishing kit. You can even make these for small trapping kits. Put your different types of lines on the outside. You know, picture wire layering tape, whatever you need. These little kits are highly useful. And I'm sorry to say, here, I'm gonna put this up. I'm sorry to say that all my YouTube videos lately have been about kits. I haven't had much time to go outdoors. Um, school kicked back in for the semester, so I'm gonna have even less time now. On top of that, taking care of the family, so I do apologize, but this is what I can do for now. When I have the time, I'll squeeze out a video here or two, uh, one or two here and there of me in the out actual doors so when I get around to that I will so just do what I can for you guys right now this has been my